does work, people will find you and come in. Now at those places, they also have at the front of each property, so Bay Villas, Golf Villas. Uh, they have like a little thing that they've says got, They've got a post, with a place where you can put little sliders, and we have little metal signs that can slide into those slides. We have those made, so if you're holding open house, whoever you're doing it for, hopefully they've got those made, you can just slide them in. And it says open houses today, and people will come by there. So you want to put them in there. Um, and make a little open house sign like this to post on the front door. So if you're at a condo complex or you're at a house that's got a screen door, and the door is open so you can let air come in, if somebody's walking by, they can't see the number on the door. And from the time they go by your open house sign on the street with the number on it that tells them you're in unit 916 until they get to your door, they can't remember what the number was anymore. Okay. So you need to have something there to invite them in. So this always also works when you get a house where you're running the AC and you don't want to have the front door white, right? So open house, please come in. It's something. Put your information on there. Put your phone number on there because some of them might stand at the front door to call you. Is it okay if I come in? Yeah. Uh, and if you're borrowing open house signs, like if you come and you borrow open house signs from me, there are little brackets on the top of the sign. So if you don't want to buy your own open house signs, you can have a writer made up. It used to be like 25 bucks, but you can put your name up there and your phone number and put that on top of our sign, because my sign's got our phone number on it. So you might want to identify yourself a little bit here. OK, so inside your open house, what are you going to do to add value that nobody else is going to offer? What are the things you're going to have inside your open house? Brownies. <laughs> we'll talk about brownies. Front desk is brownies. <laughs> um, beverages, I would say too. That that's a plus. Um, I wouldn't go overboard with the beverages. Okay. So, comps. What are you gonna have for comps? What are you gonna bring with you? They have something potentially that either sold in that area, obviously. Um, So I take a three-tier stand like this, and for comps, what I would recommend is you have all the actives, you have the pendings, and you have what has sold in the last six months to the last year. So why would you go back a year instead of six months? Well, it provides more. You know, they have more to look at. There may have only been one place sold, yeah. so you'd like to get a little bit more information. Okay. So do that for your neighborhood. Do that for the complex you're in. If it's a small complex, you might want to do it for some of the surrounding complexes so that, once again, you get more data. And you can print this straight out of Paragon. You can print straight out of Paragon with the CMA summary. What I like to do was actually export it out. So just click the export button, it'll put it into an Excel sheet. And then I would put headers and footers on there so it's got my information. Just like that. Yeah, so if somebody walks away with it, and I used to take several with me. So if somebody would take it, then they've got my information on there, so hopefully they would get back to me. What I do now is I take one, just one. So they take a picture of it? Nobody's ever done that. <laughs> that in, in today's world, yeah, that's really funny. No, they asked me if, I, if they can have it. 
And so what do I say? Like the email to you. Sorry, I only have this one, but I'd be happy to email it to you if you give me your email address. Now here we also send people your app, but I would like them to get this sheet from me for that property. You just do it right there and there. Give them, oh, you email them that document. No, I can do it. Yeah, yeah, because hopefully I'm busy. There are other people that are walking through. Yeah. And so after I finish, I want to send them an email. Thank you for coming. And then I'd send them other information. So in addition to this. Okay. So it kind of probably sures what we'll do if you come in and they're looking at one bedroom. So I've got a pre templated email that says, Hey Gabrielle, thanks for coming in today. Uh, I just I'm emailing you all the one bedroom units that are for sale, and I've also got this article that I'm sending you, and it has some links in there to bring them back to the website. So give them something of value that nobody else is going to give to them, and give them the information that they want. Another reason you want to take your comps is what if you're doing open house in a studio? And a family comes in and they say, gee, we really like this complex, but we need a two bedroom. Would it be nice to know what else is for sale? There are two bedrooms. Yeah. yeah. I had a fellow do open house for me at a property where it's a mix of leasehold and fee simple properties. And he was at a leasehold property. And he's got a big list of things. Well, he should have a big list of things that are for sale in a complex. So at the end of the day, I call him, hey, you know, how did the day go? And he said, oh, you know, not many people really wanted to buy leasehold. I said, oh, did you have people through? He said, oh, yeah, I had a, had a lot of people through, but they just weren't really interested in the leasehold. I said, well, did you have a list of other things that were available at the property? He said, oh, I didn't think about that. Mm -hmm. it's, yeah, it limits your opportunity. <laughs> yeah. So, take a good set of comps, people can see demand. A lot of the properties that I'm pulling up now, I pulled one up today for a client. So again, active, pending, sold. There was like eight that had sold in the last six months. There was one pending and one active. So if somebody comes in and you can show them eight have sold in the last six months, there's one active. How does that help you? I mean, you go pretty quick. There's not a lot of inventory, so. It gets them moving, yeah. It creates urgency. Yep. Right? And and in a second home market for condo hotels, people, you know, it's discretionary income. They don't have to move. They're not putting the kids in school. They're not moving to that condo because they've got a job and they have to relocate in most cases. It's something they've been dreaming of. And they're somewhere in that process right now. And well, we had an agent um, earlier this week. She had a client that was looking that wanted to look at everything and found something she really loved. She still wanted to look at everything. So the agent just showed her what's how many have sold, what's available for sale, and then asked, Are you going to be okay if this is sold and you're still looking? So we have, an offer, question. we have an offer out on that property right now. Yeah, okay. so I was going to say, you could just put an offer in so you can still look if you want it. You can still look, but if you let it go and it goes under contract, you know, are you going to be okay with that? So take your comps, listing sheets, and for listing sheets, you can print these right out of Paragon. We make a, a sheet like this. It's got more pictures, bigger, prettier pictures, and it's got all kinds of information on the back. So we've got a group of people, your D's and I's, we just want to see the pictures. You've got your C's and S's, they want to know everything, right? So if you can get Use the real estate a little bit better back here. You're already paying for paper. 
right? Take those. Um, these magazines are free. Oh yeah, I see those everywhere. You see those everywhere. And if you're at the kind of house, people are going to come in and they're going to say, hey, where do, where do people who live here, where do they go snorkel? Where do they like to go eat? Well, in the back of these magazines, there are maps. So you can stand right there, you can circle Aloha Mix Plate or Coconuts, Fish Tacos, or wherever you think people like to go, you can show them where the beaches are. Does that add value? Yep, absolutely. And do they start to trust you? Yeah. So you're creating a preference. And the guys who publish these love that we give them away because they're selling what? It's advertising, right? <laughs> We're distribution for them. So those guys love those. And it's got local activities in there. People want to know, what do you do? What do you do when you, you live here? We've been to the beach a million times. We've been out on Trilogy a million times. What else do people do? So having something to show people because showing is better than telling. Mm -hmm. Gives them something tangible they can take away. Where, where do you pick those up? Like, like every subway. Well, I mean, like <laughs> big chunks. Yeah, they're literally like you outside. Just go take a whole lunch. Like you could. There's okay. no, no, no cops there stopping. I usually, they actually they're at each end of my building in Okay, Lyme. gotcha. They're like on all the street corners. You know, around all the restaurants, all the coffee houses. Yeah, I've seen the okay. They are everywhere. So, grab some of those. I think it's, I've seen people staple their card to them, too. Yeah, I think probably people do. You could print out some Avery labels, put a label on it with your contact information on it. Uh, you want to take a sign in sheet? Do you want us to take one? Nope. I want you to take one to your open house. Yeah, yeah so that you can get people to sign, get their contact information. We talk a lot about giving people your app, so that's great. I like to make sure I've got their email address. I like to get a mailing address for them. Um, but mostly I want to get the email address and a phone number. So some people will just automatically go and sign up. Some people won't automatically go and sign up. So we'll talk about how to get them to sign up. Because okay. we're going to offer them something of value. Uh, if you have an inspection report, or the agent has an inspection report for the property, I would advise you to take that along. It's not something you're going to give out. It's another one of those, I've got one, and I'm not going to email it to you, but I've got one. So that shows them that you're professional, that you know what you're doing, and that the seller is serious about selling, and they've had an inspection already. I do this with houses. So when I'm listing a home, I usually recommend that the, the seller have a home inspection. Yeah. With condos, not so much. There's not as much to see, and it is, it's not inexpensive to have the inspection. But especially when I get people coming in from California, well, I get the impression it's pretty common practice there that sellers have an inspection up front. Okay. Um, and for the seller, it lets them know once they're under contract, the buyer has an inspection, what is the buyer's inspector going to find, right? So if there's simple things that they can repair, they can make those repairs and that's done. And you can kind of check that off the list with the buyer or the buyer's agent. Hey, these things have already been done. If there are some things that the seller says, no, that still works, I'm not going to fix it. And that's in the report that's going to go to the buyer as it is. You can point that out as well. So the buyer knows what they're getting into. So that works out very well. Not all your sellers are going to want to do that. So it's their money, it's their decision. But you're becoming their trusted advisor, and that's what I would advise, especially for residential properties. Uh, condos, hopefully that's going to be a little bit more simple. I usually take one buyer packet with you. And one of the questions that you can ask to engage someone is, oh, do you have a buyer's packet yet? 
And how do you think they're going to respond to that? What's a buyer's pack? What's a buyer's pack? Other, otherwise, I'd say, no. Do, do I need one? And so it'll really get them to engage quickly. So I just take one because these are expensive to make. Um, my packet, this side has the code of ethics. So I explain to them what the code of ethics is. And then these are all the contracts you need to buy real estate in Hawaii. So the purchase contract, the listing agreement, it's got seller's disclosures. They're all blank, right? So you can have some that say draft and print out. But this way, somebody that is at a C type or an S type that wants to read everything, it's all there. So they've got it. Oh, that's great. This side is statistics. So get these from the escrow companies. They print them by the millions, I'm pretty sure. Um, we do our own monthly newsletter, Maui Real Estate Advisor. Propaganda about our team. Things that we do, um, it's got lenders, it's got inspectors, it's got what the escrow process is, it's got HARPTA and FERPTA flyers in it. So if you're talking to somebody who's going to sell or even somebody who's going to buy, you can kind of explain what those things are. It's got a lot of information in it. But I can't give them one at the open house. So, you know, I have some time Thursday at about 4 o'clock. Would it be okay to meet with me in my office? Yes or no? Okay. Yes. Well, then it's like, oh, gee, we're going out to dinner then, but we're available on Friday. Right. So you'll hear a lot of people use a, a close that, you know, I have some time in my office. Is Thursday or Friday better for you? So you give them the option. I've been taught, give them a specific time, this is when I'm available, and see if they will come and meet with you that. Yeah. If they do meet with you, you get a pretty serious buyer. Um, real estate magazines, right? People I had dinner with last night had a homes and land, and they were looking at it. Um, some realtors like to take magazines, homes and land, luxury. I'm not a big fan because I really don't need to advertise somebody else's listings to my clients. I just as soon advertise my own listings. Okay. So, but some people do that. It's just more to have there for people to look at, to engage. Um, we talked about driving magazines. And one of the things I was taught was to put together a binder of my top picks. So the logic for this is somebody comes into the open house and you're on South Kihei Road, you're sitting in a $600,000 condo and somebody comes in, they start talking to you. It's like, yeah, I really like this condo, it's complex, but you know, I think I really want a house and I really like Wailea. And I know that those start, you know, three, four, five million. What do you like? What do you like at Wailea? Wouldn't it be nice to have some listings with you that you could show them? So the way I set mine up, first of all, give it a name. Uh, mine was called Pots Picks. So pick a name that works for you. And then I would create a sheet. And then different values, so I'd have my favorite properties for under $500,000, my favorite properties between $500,000 and $750,000, $750,000 to a million, a million to a million and a half, two million and up, right? So three or four properties in each price range. And I would do it for, if you look at this one, it's got Kihei and the west side, because when I was starting out, I would list stuff and sell stuff in Hana. I'm going wherever my client wants to go. And I'm going to learn the whole island. So that's just the way I did it. Now we have teams that were kind of spread out all over the place. But just wherever you're going to work, if you're just going to do south side, you know, bring in Wailea, uh, all the way to Malaya, all the way through Wailea. If you're going to do the whole island, you then look at the MLS, learn some of those properties, 
and then it would have flyers like this. So they could just flip through. And while they're standing at the counter or at the kitchen table or wherever they are, they'll stop and they'll take your book. They'll flip through and they'll engage with you. You'll talk to them a little about the area, the property that adds value for them. And they start to trust you. So what we do now is we have the binder, but it's got all of our listings in it. If there's a gap that we have where we don't have a listing, it's another Keller Williams listing in there. So we're promoting all of our properties. So you only put KW properties in there? I do now. Okay. I do now. Because we we've, we've got most of the listings. Right. We have more listings than anybody else. Okay. And we have profit sharing system. Right. So this way I can find things. I mean, we've got plenty of things to find. If I'm looking for luxury stuff, I've got stuff. Dean's got stuff. People on the west side have stuff. Um, stuff that's kind of tells. I've got kind of tells. Bob Car Rates team's got kind of tells. Sarah Twitchell's got listings. Yeah. So we can put those in. And really, if there's something else that's really, really a killer value, I don't care who it's with, I go ahead and put it in here. It's got my branding on it. Yeah. But if it's a great buy, and usually <laughs> the great buy, so every week at our team meeting, we talk about, okay, what's the best buy in the island? What have you seen this week? And usually from the time that we're having the meeting or the time we've identified the property by the end of the meeting, that property sold. So great deals are few and far between. But when somebody asks, what's a good value? Would it be a good idea to have an answer? Yeah. And if it's in a binder, showing is better than telling. And it's another reason for them to give you their contact information. <laughs> Regarding brownies and drinks, I had a young lady who was in a class like this uh, call and said, gee, can I do an open house for you? And I said, sure. She told me which one she wanted to do. And then she said, but I don't have any signs. I said, it's okay, I'll give you signs. And um, I really don't know anything about the property. Do you have a book? And so one of the things we do is we do create a book, a listing book for every property that tells you about the complex and the units there are and all those kinds of things. Uh, so, okay, we get a book. And so we're meeting at Saturday at 10 o'clock in the morning in my office. And she comes in and she says, I went to Costco and I've got trays of shrimp. I've got bottles of champagne. I have other drinks. I have you know, these other kind of dessert pastries. And I spent all this money. And I'm going to have this all at the open house for all those people that are coming through because I don't want to be that agent. So I suspect she was watching DYI TV. <laughs> and that's how she learned to do an open house and wasn't really paying attention in here. Um, people aren't going to take all that stuff. I said, people aren't going to take those things. Why not? Why aren't people going to take those beautiful shrimp off the tray? What do you think? I probably eat shrimp off the tray personally. Well, <laughs> But you're my kind of guy. Yeah. I would think just not to dirty the unit or the place that they're in. Okay. Um. My experience is anything large, right down to brownies, law of reciprocity. If I take something from you, I owe you something back. Mm. Other people, it's like, ooh, I don't know. Other people might have been touching that. I'm not sure I want that. Um, but what I found does work very nicely is some M&Ms in a bowl, even if other people aren't taking them out of there. People will come in, they won't take the donut, they won't take the brownies, they won't take the big shrimp, but they'll stand there and they'll pick those M&Ms and they'll talk to you. They'll let their kids have the M&Ms and they'll talk to you. 
And the only bad thing about M&Ms is if nobody comes in, <laughs> I eat all the M&Ms. Uh -huh. uh, take some business cards. It's really embarrassing to show up at an open house and somebody asks you, oh, do you have a business card? And your answer is, oh, I gave them all away already. Um, I take our newsletter. And if you don't have a newsletter, I would get either print out the stats from Maui, Ram Maui, or grab one of these from the escrow company. And I put it on the display, and people will come and they'll pick it up. And then this is part of something that I offer at the end in return for their email address. So I can make sure you receive this every month. Um, and that's how we get information from people. If you're really serious about real estate, you know, you're not ready to buy now, but if you're really serious about keeping track of real estate on Maui, we publish a newspaper, publish a newsletter, it's available every month. It's just condos, homes, land, what the trends are, where things are going. In my case, I give my opinion on what's driving that, and I can make sure you receive that every month by email. That's how I built my database from scratch, from just starting over here from California, not knowing anybody. So that's about 5,000 people now. Because people that are serious will give you the information, and then you're going to drip on them. And you're going to send them items of value. And people that aren't, it's like, no, no, no. That's, I can just find that myself. Well, that's OK. So they're probably not that serious. All right. So we're in the open house, and it's at the top of your page two, number six, this one I titled, Why Do We Even Need to Talk About This? This is a greeting. And the reason that this is in here is because you're going in reading body language, so are potential buyers. And realtors don't always do a good job of this. Um, I had some of my first clients came into the Kahana Sunset place where I set the first 30 days. We talked when they came in, and as they were getting ready to leave, the wife turns to the husband and says, you're going to be our realtor. And I said, well, that's great. Uh, may I ask? Why you're selecting me? She said, well, I'll tell you. We moved here from New Jersey. We love it here. We want to buy a place and live here. Been living here for X number of months. We've been to open houses everywhere from Wailea all the way up the south side, Mahalaya, the whole west side, up here. You're the first person that ever asked us our names or asked for our contact information. Wow. I said, wow. After that, they said, you know, we found a place that we like. We'd like you to come down and meet with us. Go see it. There's an open house today. And we want you to watch what this agent does when we walk in. So we went to the open house. There was a screen door. The door is open, so you can't read the number on the door. So they didn't have a sign up. So knock on the door. Go in. Uh, go in. And the agent was literally sitting on the sofa with a phone book in front of her. She was reading the phone book. She never talked to us. She never asked us a question. She just sat there the whole time. So when we went outside, as it turns out, the, the couple were actually both real estate brokers in New Jersey before they moved. Mm -hmm. And they said, see, that's what happens. So. I have this little three-step introduction. So when somebody comes in, you will know what to say to them, OK? So the first thing is we want to welcome them. So welcome to the open house. Thank you for coming. Some people say, welcome to my open house. Why would we not say that? Because you don't own it, so that's one thing. We want to make it about them. Welcome to the open house. Thank you for coming. We acknowledge them. We're going to make it about them. 
So when they first walk in, do you ask them their names right then? Like after no. you say welcome? Well, okay. No, I don't. So the next thing is we want to, here it says enroll them. Okay. So the second thing is before we get to the names, hey, that's a cool shirt. I really like that. How does that make them feel? Great. That's a compliment. That's, oh man, I love those glasses. Do you do that for both people? Usually I do it for one. That's a, that's a, that's a, and, I, and I really do it on the fly because if there's something that's the that stands out, the guy's got a Denver Broncos hat on. Hey, Broncos, you're a Broncos fan. You know, <laughs> then that gets him going, right? Yep. He likes it. He, it's a little serotonin hit there, and feels warm and fuzzy, and, and he's happy to be there, and he starts to like you. Okay. So enroll them, just give them a compliment, that's probably the easiest way. And then I wait to see if they'll introduce themselves. I don't wait a long time, wait a few beats, see if they introduce themselves. Again, it's I want it to be about them. If they don't, I say, hi, my name is Lee. And I'll put my hand out. If they don't shake hands, you know, there's stuff floating around in the air. People are a little nervous, but do a fist bump, whatever. And even if you offer a fist bump, then that kind of gets them to go sometimes, too. It's like, oh, yeah, look, this guy's cool. We're doing a fist bump. All right? Yeah. And then they'll give you their name. Do you ever have people like that bring kids to open up? Do you ever see that? Oh yeah. 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 What like what do you do for like, that? Do you just kind of keep your eye on them or? Yeah, I mean if we're in a condo, there's not a lot they're gonna do. I've had people that just were completely oblivious, and the kids were running around like wild Indians. That's that's what I was thinking in my head. I was like, because I've seen once of the kids are like out here, and they're nuts. You know, from having done hundreds of open houses with probably thousands of people through, I've had that maybe twice okay. ever. Yeah, and you know, if they're really getting goofy, like I had one that was was pane glass door with panes, when the kids banging on there, I just say, Ooh, "Whoa, don't do that! I don't want you to get hurt." But yeah, you got to be really sensitive, and then maybe you just don't want to be that sensitive so that those people will go away and not be your clients. So yeah. maybe you don't want to deal with that. But no, I don't, with, with kids, they just come in, they walk through. Kids don't want to be there, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. It's, it's like, come on, mom, let's go, I want to go to the beach, whatever. Yeah, so I don't get that too much. Oh, 